Now we begin looking inside the organization at its capabilities. Now what we're going to be doing at some point is saying, well, here's external, the pastel, the five forces. Here's the internal, the capabilities. How do these match up? If what you're capable of is quite different to what's required by the environment, you're going to have a, a bit of trouble. What you really want is a nice match. So if the economy is going to be going up, then it'd be quite nice to have capabilities which would allow you to produce more units so that you can uh, uh, feed into the increased sales demand which is coming from the better economy. Now, strategic uh, capability uh, depends on two uh, parts. Uh, there is, first of all, get this to work, uh, there we are, uh, it is resources and competences. Now, for the moment, this is not uh, absolutely correct, but for the moment, if you think of resources here uh, as basically assets, tangible assets, So a tangible asset, it could be machinery. You have a large factory which is capable uh, of uh, producing goods. It could be that you have a good supplier network. It could be a brand. A brand could be a resource uh, because the brand name gives you the ability, the capability, if you like, of uh, selling new products based on the reputation of your brand. Lots of cash in a bank is an asset. You can go out and you can buy raw materials, you can buy machinery, you can afford to expand into other countries and so on. The competence is really how you use those assets. Or the resources. So I could have a resource, it could be a car production plant, but if I didn't have the capabilities, so I could have a resource, a car production plant, but if I didn't have the competence, if I didn't know how to produce cars, how to design them and so on, I really wouldn't have the capability of producing cars. So both of these go together. Businesses, uh, at the very minimum, must have what's known as threshold capabilities. These are the minimum capabilities needed just to compete at all. This is These are capabilities which really let the, the business kind of hang on by its fingertips. It's, it's making a profit, but a miserable profit, uh, and it's not going to have perhaps a very long-term future. But this is the first thing you, you need, are these threshold capabilities. What we really want, however, is strategic capability. And as soon as you see the, the word st strategy or strategy or strategic, you want to be thinking long term. And strategic capability means we're going to be having a long-term capability and this is going to give us what's called competitive advantage. So competitive advantage really means long-term. Sustainable. Where you do better than the rivals. So advantage is you're doing better than your rivals and competitors. Competitive advan advantage means long-term sustainable. So year after year after year, you manage to beat the competitors. And this is what you need for long-term success. That's made up of these uh, two parts uh, here. You have your strategic uh, uh, capability. It is the threshold capabilities plus more, plus additional capabilities that give you the edge over your competitors. 
So to do really well, you need these capabilities for competitive advantage, and they can be of one of two sorts. First of all, you might have unique resources. So from time to time, pharmaceuticals companies uh, manage to invent a fantastic new drug, a blockbuster. And for maybe 15, 20 years, they have the patent on making that drug. No one else is allowed to, to make it. That is, certainly for the 15 or 20 years, a unique resource, something they own, which no one else can own, uh, and uh, c companies which have this unique resource can make fantastic profits. Of course, it could come to an end if somebody managed to find an alternative drug which have just got the, the same effect and so on, but for the time being, it's a unique resource giving uh, opportunities for fantastically high profits. However, uh, by and large, most resources are not unique. Uh, most resources are plant and equipment, uh, machinery, uh, factory, shops, uh, uh, and inventory. And, and by and large, uh, you can go down or you can go and you can buy these. You can buy manufacturing equipment, you can buy computers, you can buy inventory, uh, and you can raise capital from the market. So there aren't that many unique resources uh, around. It's only in particularly specialist situations that you might have them. Core competences are ways in which the organization uses its resources better than its competitors, uh, and in ways others cannot uh, imitate or obtain easily. So if you took, uh, for example, Apple, So we could argue that, by and large, Apple doesn't use resources that aren't available to any uh, producer of mobile phones. Apple's mobile phones are actually made by a subcontractor. So there's nothing kind of maybe special about the manufacturing technique. They buy in a lot of their, their chips and the electronics and uh, so on there. Uh, they, have, they have some fairly unique resources in terms of uh, some of the, the software and so on, but but let's, for the sake of argument, say there's nothing particularly unique about the machinery or the, the 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 bits and pieces, the inventory, the parts that go into Apple iPhones. However, what Apple is particularly good at is is how it uses those resources, maybe better than its competitors, how it comes out with designs how it comes out with interfaces, how it comes up with good ideas, like ideas for iTunes and so on, that its competitors did not come up with. So they both have the same kit, if you like, the same play, play box almost, of unique resources. You give that to two different companies, one will create a fantastic product, and one will create, you know, an ordinary product. When it comes to copying uh, or trying to replicate the strategic capability, by and large, it is much more difficult to replicate the core competences. If we say what gives rise to Apple's fantastic record of design and innovation, it's quite hard to know what that is. You can't go down to the local kind of design and innovation shop and buy some people who are going to replicate the design powers of, of Apple staff. Uh, whereas you can take an Apple machine apart and see all the bits in it uh, and, and see the resources that were needed, the, the, the competences are, are much more difficult to get a handle on. Similarly, I could have two restaurants or cafes side by side, essentially the same size, using the same uh, cooking equipment and so on, one will be a very successful restaurant, the other one will not. The difference is the competence, not only of the chef, but also maybe the competence of the, the other staff that maybe make the successful restaurant particularly friendly and inviting, uh, whereas in the less successful uh, uh, restaurant, they simply don't have the competence to do that. Resource-based or Position-based strategy. 
Now, what a position-based strategy is, you look out and you see what's happening in the environment, what's happening in the politics, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal, what's happening my competitors and so on. And what you do is you change to match that environment. So what happened, uh, we'll say we talked right at the very start about Kodak, Kodak saw that the, the market and the technology for film was changing. And what Kodak did uh, was instead of making film, they tried to make digital cameras. And we said that it didn't work very well because uh, their cameras hadn't got a great reputation and it wasn't easy to sell them at proper prices and so on. But I was position based. Kodak changed what it was doing in order to match the environment, match the technology and match what people wanted. Now to to some extent that's sensible. However, what it abandoned uh, was uh, a lot of know how uh, in films. It had a lot of know-how in the chemistry of creating colour films. It had a lot of know-how in, in, in dealing and manipulating colour. That was its business and so on. And essentially, when it went over to making digital cameras, this know-how was not used anymore. So this know-how was, was really a, a kind of unique competence which Kodak had, uh, which it, it kind of abandoned. And there's no reason why, if you're particularly good at making films with a unique set of competences, maybe a unique set of resources in terms of the patents, you're automatically going to be really good uh, at making digital cameras uh, when you've got no track record, no particular resources or special competences to do that. The other strategy or strategic approach says, hang on a minute, it may be sensible for you to change to match the environment. But before you throw away and abandon all these fantastic resources and competences, which might have been built up over years, let's see if we can make a use of those. So what we should do is focus on our resources and competences. These are uh, really the our treasure, if you like. These are what made us uniquely good with you know, strategic capabilities. Let's see if maybe we could use those in a different way. So one of the things Kodak tried eventually was to use its knowledge of inks or, 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 or dyes rather, uh, and it was obviously able to spread stuff very, very thinly and evenly over film and so on. It began making inkjet printers. Uh, and it made quite good inkjet printers. Unfortunately, the, the size of uh, producers like Hewlett Packard and so on meant it was very hard for them to break into the market. They then tried to uh, uh, really become, I think, a consulting business uh, on colour and colour chemistry and colour processing and so on. Uh, but, but again, it was kind of too late. Uh, they didn't quite make it into that market either. But it would probably have been better if instead of switching to digital cameras, in a way going back to the start again and learning a new set of tricks, they had actually earlier said, well, how could we reuse, repurpose our existing uh, core competences? Now, what uh, are the resources that we could be uh, talking about? Well, there's a the financial resource, there's money, that's okay. There's manpower. I've done all these. These are usually set out as M words. That's why it's manpower. It, it is, of course, really nowadays human resources. It's not just men. It's human resources. That can be very, very uh, important in businesses which have got particular skill sets where it's not particularly easy to recruit qualified people. Management. Management is a particularly scarce resource in family companies. Uh, let's say the father has started the business, has got three children, the father wants to leave the business or involve the children in the business, uh, and the business 
or the children are simply not interested in that business, what the owner should do is go out and hire good management. So unless uh, in family companies you know, the owners are willing to buy in management and they keep trying to keep the management within the family, they're running a big risk and management is not up to it. If you're thinking of opening abroad and you've had no experience whatsoever of opening abroad, then you need to go and find a manager, find a management team who's got experience in opening abroad. If you don't have the right resource to follow your ideas, you're not going to work. Manufacturing resource or just machinery, that's, that's straightforward. Uh, we have markets. Uh, you can run out of markets, you could saturate your home market. Now we need to go and find markets abroad. Or we need in some way to try to expand who we're selling to so we can keep selling uh, products we don't dry up. There is a marketing resource. Are we good at bringing new products to the market? Are we good at kind of advertising? Are we good at, at choosing the right features on these products and make them attractive uh, to buyers? That is a resource. Material in some situations is a resource. I'll add uh, two others. I will put in here management information systems. In other words, an IT resource. Increasingly, if people are going to be competing well, and, and particularly on the internet, or maybe even where their business is, is being run really through the internet, just not just a marketing thing through the internet, you need really good IT resources. Think if you were an airline, the IT resources is fantastically high to uh, you know, manipulate prices, uh, book people on, book special meals, keep track of luggage and so on. Terribly sophisticated and if you don't have good IT, you're not going to be able to run an airline. Another one I'll put up here is make. Now by make, I mean brand. A strong brand is of enormous help. If you get brand loyalty, it means when people are shopping, they just pick off the shelf the brand they recognize. You don't go through any uh, particular decision-making process. And should I buy this brand or that brand? You, you take what's recognized and what you've been happy with in the past and so on. So brand can actually be a barrier to entry. Uh, if you're going in trying to compete against an existing strong brand, you're going to have an uphill fight. Brand is also uh, extremely uh, uh, useful when you come to launch new products. Uh, if you launch a new product and you can attach a brand name to it, a particular brand name to it, then, then people assuming they've been happy with your brand and your products in the past, will automatically assume that this is going to be another good product. Uh, and, and brands are jealously guarded by companies uh, because they know that this is a, a, a resource or, uh, which is elevates them really from, from just uh, the threshold resources up to almost a unique resource, a unique brand name, which has got important qualities attached to it.